Who is Gabby Petito? And why are all of you on the internet so racist? So here's where I'm at. A new real-life murder mystery is making waves on the internet recently, and I'll be honest with you, when I first came across it, I go, oh, God, here we go again, because my position from the start is the internet is naturally obsessed with these types of things. Have you ever seen Don't F With Cats? That is amazing. If you haven't seen that documentary, go see it, but all it is is about a guy who uh, he's making videos injuring cats, killing cats. It's really gross. But what's cool about it is how the internet, they all band together, they make a a group on Facebook, and they take apart every piece of the video. We're talking the doorknob, we're talking the blankets, all of this, and they find the guy. From about, they, they chase them all over the internet. And these people never left their living room. I, it's incredible. Gotta love the human hive. But I bring this up as an anecdotal story about how the internet, we as pu- people, are just naturally drawn to it. So I come across it and I scroll past it. But I see more of it. I see more of it. Then I see how there's already a massive culture of people obsessed with with this case. Now, let's talk about the story. The story is, you have a girl named Gabby and her boyfriend, fiance, Brandon, Brian, Billy, Laundry. Um, Let me get you his name. My first guess was right. It's Brian. So, Brian, Laundry, and Gabby are engaged. And I guess something came up and they had a little break off and they were still together, but they were no longer engaged. It was at that period they think we're going to rekindle our spark by becoming YouTubers and we're going to join the van life. So they, Gabby goes out and buys herself a van. Her and Brian develop the inside of the van as to something they can live in and they start a YouTube channel to document their journey. Now here's the thing. It didn't have a big following, but it's definitely a bigger following than what we got at the Rethink Tank. And they had some momentum, people following their story and people following them on TikTok. And then the story really catches weight when they go on this journey and fishy stuff starts happening. Gabby hasn't been heard from in in a couple weeks or whatever, and... Then the parents see around town the van. Word around town is Brian's back. He's back in Orlando. Oh, so let's pause. They took the van as far out as to Wyoming from where they started in Orlando. Now, here's the van. It's back. Driving around Orlando. People got sight of Brian. No Gabby. Still haven't heard from her. Now, up until this like week or two hiatus where she dropped off, Mom and dad got a call from her every day. Tell her where she's at. Then it just, then she, the parents receive a text. No, sir, poor service or whatever. Uh, you, you know, can't, whatever, can't get in contact. And then it was at that point, her Instagram posts started changing. It was so, the, the, her, her followers and friends can see a clear point at which where her Instagram posts were most likely Brian pretending to be her. So, obviously, all eyes are looking at Brian. Brian, why are you back, and why, you know, where's Gabby and everything else? What gets fishy is the parents. You know, Gabby's parents are reaching out to Brian's parents, and Brian's parents are just ignoring him, hiding him out. Uh, The police are trying to find Brian because he's a person of interest. That doesn't mean he's a suspect yet, but they're looking for him because clearly he knows something that's going on and he's a person of interest. They want to talk to him and find out what's happening. So the internet just grabs hold of this and it becomes a thing. Now people are picking apart everything. A video comes to surface of about a week before Gabby's disappearance. There was a domestic violence situation where apparently Gabby was the aggressor and, you know, Brian had scratches on his face and on his body, but that could have easily have been in self-defense to get away from a clearly psychotic boyfriend. But also, the quagmire gets stickier. 
Brian, it comes to find out, he had some videos posted. People are going through his Instagram. And again, just like the Internet Hive did with Don't Mess With Cats, they're going through and they're finding he's he's got pictures of these books that are about like a Bonnie and Clyde boyfriend and girlfriend that go across the country killing people. So this guy's clearly psychotic, and he had his own fantasies of probably what he wanted to bring to his relationship with Gabby. Now, the night before, or, you know, maybe a night or two before Gabby's disappearance, because, again, we don't know this, this, the strict details of it, but um, around the time where Gabby disappeared, Gabby and Brian were seen at a bar. At this bar in Wyoming by their campsite, there were two other girls camping at the same campsite who were seen to be hanging out with them at this bar. That night, these two went missing and were murdered. These two were in contact with people at home telling them that they're freaked out. There's some guy following them. There's this creepy guy. They're worried about a creepy guy. So the question is, did Brian kill them? Did Brian and Gabby in combination kill them? Did something happen? Maybe, you know, so there's the jury's out on what did happen. But what's crazy is then finally they're coming to get, we need to reconcile with Brian. What's going on with the laundry man? So we go after Brian. We find out he's missing now. We're led to believe that the parents helped hide him out to give him an opportunity to escape. They use the van as a decoy to give him time. Who knows where he's at now? I mean, he was in Orlando. That man could have done a reverse Cuba and went back on a raft. Who knows? But what's crazy about all of these stories is the second you start catching the little tidbits, all the different layers to the onion, you get interested. You want to see where it's going to go. So, you you know, when I first came across it, I was totally disinterested. But as it snowballed, you know, my ear and ear got closer and closer to the ground. I'm, I'm interested. Okay, let's see where this goes. But like the Internet and like our society always does, of course, this simple story needs to get politicized again. Now it's a racial issue. Look at the internet. Oh my. And how many times do we have to hear this? It's always, oh, the missing white woman syndrome. That's all you people care about. Look at how many other people go missing and you only care about her because she's a cute little white girl. Are you ever bored with saying the same thing? Like, do you ever get annoyed with the fact that your brain can only, like, defect and and short circuit to the same racial defect of uh, racist? Like, at what point do you just go, that is not what this is? You know what's bigger than the Gabby Petito story? You ever see the, the podcast Serial? This is an incredible story that has HBO documentaries about it that any person who has ever come in contact with has been completely consumed by. One of the biggest murder stories, and it's still ongoing and still being investigated, and and dirt still just continuously gets kicked up. This is a very engaging story of Hyman Lee, who was murdered in the Baltimore County Leakin Park, And the suspect ended up being, ironically, her boyfriend, Adnan Syed. And the story, and and if there's a way to get introduced to this doc, this story, it's through the serial podcast. You'll watch, listen to the first episode, and you'll be consumed. There's no watching it. That's what made the HBO documentary so great. But again, here's a Korean girl who's killed by her Indian boyfriend and all those crazy white folks and everybody else, regardless of racial lines, got completely consumed and obsessed with. Guess what? One of these crazy stories comes once a year or whatever because that's all our human brain can handle. It isn't because this girl's a white girl that we care. It's because, one, she already had a YouTube following. She already had this following of her story and then she goes missing. So the eyeballs were already on her more so than even that it's let's talk about the capacity of the human experience analogously we all have this very basic understanding of drugs how if we gave everybody a drug to cure uh i don't know the mumps on your feet 
Yeah, it works for 80% of people. But don't forget the CVS receipt laundry list long of side effects that happen for maybe 20% of people. So for 80% of people, they pop the pill and the measles on their feet are gone. But guess what? For 20% of people, they're blind. But that's okay because 80% of us no longer got bumps on our feet. Craig's got to figure out what he's going to do. Dude can't see, but works for 20% of us. Regardless, that's just the reason for that is because we have so many people and there's so much variation that not everything works for everybody the same way. So I bring up that because I want to use that as an analogy to the internet. This is the first time in the human experience that we are engaged with and reminded of all the problems everywhere all the time. The human capacity used to and always has been only able to deal with What's in the general vicinity? Our very basic human capacity can only handle the trials and tribulations of our tribe. If I had to deal with the entire world's problems, we'd be overwhelmed. And that's why we have such an influx of suicide, depression, anxiety, because this is so new. And for 80% of the people, the internet will be the greatest advancement we ever have. But also, we got to acknowledge and try to help those that are going to be the defaulted with side effects of this crazy new introduction. All I'm saying is, when you come back and go, you care about Gabby Petito because you're racist, because you don't care about all these other problems... I come at you and go, one, it's because I can't handle all them problems. I can't even handle this girl's problem. It it depresses me. It's a bummer. And and you kind of want to remove yourself from it from to some degree just because you don't even want you don't want the even more additional weight on your heart. I don't need to deal with it. But now let's go to the specific point. We gotta make it a people of color thing, and you won't you don't care about these people. But here's a really interesting t- statistic, and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do we do when 55% of the 543,000 people missing, over 543,000 people, if 59% of them are white and 37% of them are minority, maybe it's just because this is the majority of people. The majority of people in this country are white. And the majority of people, just statistically because they're the majority of people, but the majority of people missing are also white. We're not ignoring people. You know who's being ignored? Do the math. I gave you 59 plus 37. That leaves out 3%. Those 3% are documented as unknown. How are you unknown? The only person unknown is The Rock and his family. So 3% of The Rock's lineage is missing, and we don't even bat an eye. All in all, this is what we are drawn to. We're drama addicts. The only reason something like the real life, The Bachelor or Jersey Shore has any weight, it's because we're crackheads for the drama. We only care about, we don't care about, I don't know, the crazy man in North Korea creating nukes or China buying up all our industries. No, no, no. I'm only concerned with Snooky hooking up with the situation. And this is that. TikTok made it pop, and I get to see all these little tidbits, the tapings of, uh, you know, the cop's body cam on YouTube, all this stuff. It makes for fun drama. And now I'm playing the game of Clue on my computer. I'm sorry, folks. I get how the Barbie doll aisle in Toys R Us has oppressed you as much as it has. But can't we just acknowledge it is a fact, just like my shirt is green, that the demographic with the most missing numbers, most missing humans, are white girls. And there's more white girls than there are other girls or guys. So wouldn't it... Why does it surprise you that there is a a giant following of white girls that are concerned with a story about girls like themselves? This is the, the classic fear of any white girl is that some guy, white guy, boyfriend type is going to 
overpower them, overstrength them, and murder them. And so the only reason it strikes a chord with these people is because they fear and see themselves in this girl. Why can't you have any empathy towards that? I have empathy towards your Barbie doll situation at Toys R Us. Can't you have any inkling of empathy towards a girl who sees her situation in this missing girl? Well, let's conclude the situation. Recently, they found a body that is leading them to believe it's most likely Gabby. They found her near the park in Wyoming. Mr. Laundry is missing. He's gone on the run. Nobody knows where he's at. And, you know, rest in peace. It seems as if we found Gabby. My, my heart goes out to her and her family. Um, before we conclude, I did want to wrestle with this. Um... It's a crazy situation, and maybe I, I should save it for an actual podcast so I can wrestle the idea with someone else, but how much do you hate Brian Laundrie's parents, right? Um, the, the, the Gabby Petito's family, she, they, they all came out and, and were pleading towards the family that they're crying on video please if you were in our situation you would just want to know what's going on with your daughter how do you not relate to our need to know our want to know and and these parents ignoring them going dark and probably helping their son escape that is that's so dark that's so evil you're you're a conspirator you're helping in this in this crime but then you got to ask, what would your mom do? You know, what, what would you do if your sister came home? And, or, you know, what would my sister do if I came home and, and was in this situation? You know, part of, the, part of the theory is that what if, what if Brandon, they got in a fight? I mean, listen, they had this huge domestic dispute. When they had the dis- domestic dispute, he said, just put me in jail. Just put me in jail. I just need to be safe away from her for, for just a night. Just put me in jail. I mean, it was really bizarre. He's crying to go to jail to get away from her, p- pleading for it. So the question is, could they have just gotten in a massive fight and he left her and, and she died? And he knows that all eyes are on her. She's gone missing. He left her out there. He's got this guilty conscience now. And he knows no matter what, he's OJ'd. He, he's, he's done for. They've, they've convicted him before even trying him. And, and what if he didn't? And what do you do? As, as the family, if that's the story your son comes to you with, you're probably going to try to help him and, and you're going to break the law. You know, I, I understand what I'm, what I'm saying right now is against the law. It is a problem. You do not do it. But also there is one line that resonates overall and it's the familial line. Family comes first. I mean, listen, we know that there's 10 fast and furious movies because there's nothing stronger than family, but it's just a weird situation because morally I default to nothing other than you owe the Gabby Petito family. You owe them an answer. And when we look at something like the Las Vegas shooting, right, all the cameras go to his brother because he's gone. Nobody has this guy anymore. They killed him. And now they're going to his brother to ask all these questions. And his brother didn't do anything. The day this happened, he was at home with his family in another state. And now he's got all these cameras in his face and da-da-da. So we saw it with uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and them. Their, Their families are... Look, they, they look, go to that way. Hey, what, what are you, the Unabomber? What, what's going on with the family? And, and, and in those situations, they have always been like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that, the second you cross that line in a murder or serial killer into psychopath, the familial line is broken. You are no longer family. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not the person I always knew him to be. So you have somebody in the Las Vegas shooter, his brother, just like, whoa, I, I, he would never help him. He, they we're no longer family. But also, um, I guess the question is, at what point does that line break? There's just a really interesting philosophical question here. I, I leave it for you to wrestle with. Uh, where do you draw that line with your family? Jump in the comments because that's the kind of stuff that I need with these algorithms and stuff. But uh, 
Very interesting situation, guys. It's just another story, and I hate to do that and dismiss it that way because it, it's heartbreaking and terrible, and I wouldn't wish this upon anybody, especially you know with someone with a sister. I, I would fight tooth and nail against these types of situations. Unfortunately, they happen. They happen in mass, and to pretend that you know picking one out of 200,000 has any racial, social, hateful implications besides just consumed by the drama of it all, then then you're the lost one in the situation, and, and I'm here for a conversation to help. But regardless, guys, interesting situation. Definitely going to be interesting to see how it pans out. We, we got a uh, Shawshank Redemption run for Mexico, so we'll see how it goes. Every, all eyes are watching. Grab your popcorn. The show's on. But other than that, guys, so here's where I'm at.